Hey guys, it's Greg. How's it going? Today I seem to be trapped in this circle over here. I'm not totally sure why. Um, so today we're going to look at Coursera's designated data science pathway, which is very interesting because they have it laid out in this roadmap between jobs. They assume you start here and then say, how do you become an entry-level data analyst? Well, you'd have to take these courses and we'll look at that down below. Uh, and then after you've done that, and then maybe some spent some time in the field, your skills would go up. You would take some more courses that they're going to recommend. And then eventually you'd become an entry-level data scientist. And then you do that again. And you take more courses that the layout, you spend more time in the field, and eventually you'll become a uh, senior-level data scientist. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So Data analysts are highly valued for their ability to help companies make data-driven decisions by translating data into insights using SQL, Tableau, and more. Becoming a data analyst is an ideal way to launch and advance a data science career. I totally agree with that. There's really no complaints. Uh, what I do have is a sm slight complaint over here about key skills to learn should be specifically MySQL. This sort of implies that MySQL is preferred amongst companies than other ones. And some companies, sure, that might be true, but uh, it really doesn't matter what flavor of SQL you learn. Uh, math and statistics, of course. So we start off with the Duke University data science math skills. So it really is a prerequisite math course. It doesn't really teach anything about like computers, SQL, that type of thing. It is straight up math and it is useful. As you can see, you know, math symbols one at a time. It is foundational. And if you haven't taken some sort of uh, university or you know, uh, definitely if you haven't taken like high school, late high school level mathematics, then I would definitely recommend getting this course. Uh, inferential statistics. So it's kind of an interesting one they uh, shove in the middle here because a lot of people have taken this course. A lot of people have taken what's after, which is the IBM data analyst. And then here we have something that not many people have taken on inferential statistics. Uh, but I can see why they would do this because the, uh, the IBM data analyst that's after that is phenomenal. Uh, but the problem is that it doesn't really teach too much into this uh, statistics. So it's a really good idea that they put that in here. Uh, of course, the IBM data analyst, um, you know, if you are coming becoming a data analyst, then this is kind of a given. Uh, you can easily replace this with the IBM data science instead. But uh, this is a great one. And, yeah, you know, I think you'll really enjoy it and learn like SQL, Excel, all, all the really important tabular data stuff that will, I'd say after these three, uh, and to be honest, after just this itself, you can probably start applying for data analyst jobs and uh, who knows you might you might get something so after that it chooses the machine learning pipelines with azure ml studio that is a really interesting choice learn how to use the adult income census data to train a model to predict an individual's income i disagree i disagree uh, i feel like it's a little bit silly to so the IBM data analyst doesn't do anything about machine learning at all. It'll, you know, do SQL, help you kind of uh, prepare data for machine learning, but they're not really going to explain any of that stuff. Uh, certainly not any of the models or how that works. Uh, inferential statistics will cover a little bit about, um, you know, they're not really going to call it machine learning. They'll call it like statistical, uh, well, statistical inference, which is a little bit different. Um, so they don't really cover machine learning. And I find it odd that they get you to train a model without really knowing how they work at all. Uh, I believe the purpose of this is to say uh, that, you know, you can become a data analyst uh, and, and to kind of step out of the zone a little bit, you should probably learn some machine learning. Uh, but I don't really appreciate them just shoving that in there. I think it's a little bit odd. Okay, so at this point, they're kind of assuming you've maybe become a data analyst or you're looking to progress to become a data scientist. So they say data scientists use probability, statistics, mathematics, and computer science to make predictions about complex systems. Gaining experience as a data analyst is excellent preparation for success as a data scientist. And that the key skills to learn are R, Python, statistics, data analysis, data visualization, and machine learning. Okay, so uh, the only slight complaint I have is that it's strictly not necessary to learn both of these languages, but to become an all-encompassing engineer, you know, it's, it's not a bad idea, to be honest. So they start you off in this with the Python for Everybody specialization, which is very interesting because, well, this assumes that you have no knowledge in Python at all. 
Uh, but that can't be the case. If you've taken the IBM Data Analyst Certificate, well, this course is in Python. So you must know some Python. So this is where their roadmap starts to look a little bit different than what their picture implies here. I, I wish that this wasn't the picture that they gave. Because, you know, if you're going here and going in order, well, actually, what you're kind of doing is actually going and then taking a step back. Because, like, actually, no, I need to learn Python again for some reason from the beginning. And you move forward and we'll see later. You know, you have to take some back pedals as well, uh, just repeating material because they said that you should. Uh, and I don't think that you should, uh, although it's not a terrible idea sometimes. Uh, but doing the Python for Everybody's Specialization in full, uh, well, you have two options here if you've already taken the IBM Data Analyst. Well, you can either power through the beginning stuff that you know hopefully you know well and treat it as practice, uh, or you can kind of just look over it and be like, yeah, I, I think I know this stuff. I'm going to move on. The problem with the, the, the latter choice there is that you can't get the certification or specialization certificate uh, unless you do all of the exercises that they have laid out. Uh, so you could go through it very, very quickly, but um, just note that, you know, I'm not sure if this pathway is as completely linear as they, uh, as they implied there. Okay, so you would, you would do that. The main point, you know, they're saying learn Python very well. Uh, I agree with that. Then they say the John Hopkins data science, which is interesting. This course is in R, so it's kind of what they said here. They said key skills to learn are in Python. Well, they made sure that you learned Python even more. And then R, so data science in R, that's a great course. But then they say the IBM data science in Python. So now they're back to a lot of the, the stuff that they're going to cover in this course, but they do it in Python. Now, this is a, I'm not going to say that this is a bad thing that they're suggesting because they're making you become like an all-encompassing engineer here, learning a lot about the programming language and the math at the beginning, uh, and then both R and Python very well. And this is, this is fine, although it's not my suggestion, because yeah, most people kind of want to move a little bit quicker than this. But if you can take the time and go through these, you know, it, it's not a bad idea, to be honest. Okay, so both of these courses are uh, very similar, uh, but the IBM is in Python and the John Hopkins is in, uh, is in R, but they're great courses to learn all of that stuff. Uh, what's interesting about the data science is it is going to go a little bit more into the machine learning than, uh, than the John Hopkins is, and that is kind of typical with Python versus R. Uh, more commonly, machine learning is done in Python and the more statistical stuff which is very closely related to machine learning, but kind of a different point of view. Um, that's more done in R. And then they suggest the build data analysis and transformation skills in R using Deployer. Uh, this is a little bit funny because like, why did we just do nine courses in Python so that we could kind of cap it off with a project in R? I have a guess, and I'm guessing it's because we'll see at the end of their thing, uh, the, at the end of the next section, that they'll suggest a project in Python and machine learning probably uh, probably deep learning if I had to guess um, and that's fine okay so this is fine um, I'm pretty happy with this I agree with that's a kind of an entry-level data scientist you know Python you have the math skills from above uh, we have all the uh, you know typical data science and a little bit more into the machine learning with the IBM data science as well and then a project you know that's not bad actually I I'd say that pretty much defines a, uh, a entry-level data scientist Okay, now for senior level, data scientists advance their careers by gaining expertise in machine learning, predictive models, deep learning, and SaaS, and move into leadership roles through developing management and communication skills. Uh, I agree with key skills to learn is TensorFlow, machine learning, and deep learning. I'm not sure why SaaS was the way to go. I, I, do they mean SAS? Like software? No, SaaS with one A has to be the programming language, right? I am very confused by that because software as a service is SAAS and then there's that other SAS. But this is the this means the programming language. So I have no idea why they're suggesting that. And then they don't teach you any SAS. So that seems very odd, but sure. Take the courses that they have laid out here. I already saw them and I agree with them. The machine learning course by Andrew Ng, he's about to update this, and that's going to be phenomenal. It was already phenomenal. And then the deep learning specialization, which is definitely to be taken after the machine learning course. Again, amazing. That's what really defines a, you know, a good data scientist is they're good at these things here and understand it really well. And those will do it for you. Uh, and then unsurprisingly, yeah, uh, using TensorFlow with Amazon SageMaker. 
they do a guided project there. Uh, one thing I would have suggested here is I, I probably would have put something related to the cloud in here uh, because they do a project and that's good. But uh, I would have I would have suggested one of their bigger specializations there, like either the Google Cloud ones or the uh, the AWS as well, the uh, Practical Data Science with AWS. I feel like that's cutting a cutting it a little bit short with just the uh, just the guided project, but you know it, it's it's the right idea for sure. Now, if my memory is correct on all of these courses, I don't think they teach Spark anywhere. And I would very highly recommend learning a bit more of the big data stuff like Spark and Hadoop. Uh, I think that will greatly aid you along with uh, everything else they have here. Other than that, you know, I pretty much agree. And it's very similar to my uh, data science pathway as well. I recommend the IBM Data Science or Analyst. Uh, there they have the IBM Data Science. To get better at coding uh, Python, I, I definitely agree with that. Optionally, you can learn some of the R stuff, and, and if you prefer R, then you'd probably take the John Hopkins one, uh, and then you know move to machine learning, deep learning, and then on the cloud as well. So I, I mostly agree with it. I, I pointed out where I think there's those little tiny things that are odd, especially SAS. I do not understand what they're talking about there. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe it's some other SAS and there's like a fourth or fifth SAS acronym that I'm not familiar with and it's not the programming language. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that in the description down below. I do have the entire pathway laid out with the links if you want to follow that or interested in any of the courses on their own. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a great day. See you later.